I kept my early pen for travel photography, and although I use OMD cameras today, I don't have to make apologies for any lack of quality that the EPL1 may have had. It still works, but now passed to a friend, which she still uses today, liking it so much that I cannot persuade her to purchase an OMD, even an EM10. I am starting this photo tour high up on the South Downs, not far from Chichester. Goodwood Racecourse is on the right, just out of shot. The image clearly shows the important requirement for the right sort of weather regarded for the big view. I am on shutter priority. Why? Because I am using a telephoto lens, increasing the risk of camera shake when hand-holding. In the end, I settled on 40mm, but kept the telephoto lens on for convenience. There was no need to change. Is the 40 to 150 known as the fantastic plastic? If so, no need for apologies here. The acid test for any camera and lens is to point it at the sun. Damage to the sensor is possible. Something, however, I have never experienced. Why? Because I hand hold. Pop the camera on the tripod and the risk of sensor damage increases because the camera is absolutely still. Anyway, for a reasonably fit person, it shouldn't be a problem to hand hold at a five hundredth of a second with a wide angle lens and achieve a perfectly sharp image. Even so, I wouldn't point the camera at the sun for too long, especially with an optical finder. Delkey is just a couple of miles up Chichester Channel from West Ichinor. Another sunset picture, but a totally different sky. Notice that I am now spot metering everything, which I still use today with the aid of an electronic finder, underexposing very slightly, avoiding blown out highlights as shadows are easier to correct in post-production, provided lightening them doesn't increase noise. Unless you live in Portsmouth, Portsdown is one of those places best discovered by studying the Ordnance Survey map before you leave home. It is north of the city, overlooking the motorway, and much of Portsmouth is in view as well as the Isle of Wight across the Solent. Depths of field sharpness achieved by traditional photography, F9, micro four-thirds technology, and the hyperfocal distance. A location of great historical importance is an important part of my work. Built around 654 to 662 AD, St. Peter on the Wall is Grade 1 listed and one of the oldest Christian churches in England in regular use. It is situated on a remote headland overlooking the North Sea in Essex. Another sunset shot, but this time I have exercised more control using Aperture Priority. Flare can be more of a problem with zoom lenses, but reduced by using a small aperture. If I was better prepared, I would take this type of shot with a prime lens, but I think that I've got away with it. Never be afraid to take images that go against all the rules. They are only there for guidance. The lens I have used may puzzle you. The 12 to 60 was not micro four thirds, but one of the earlier four thirds lenses. Olympus produced an adapter so that four thirds lenses could be used on a micro four thirds camera. I don't think that it is any longer in production. Sporting one of the best bathing beaches in Dorset and beyond, Weymouth has an old harbour where many of the original buildings are preserved. This is the typical calendar or postcard 
shot. But don't, please don't fall into the popular misconception that this class of photography is easy. It is not. Not only do you want plenty of colour, helped of course by the right weather, you don't want too many shadows that can be quite difficult to control in strong light. But here, the water and its reflection is a bonus and great help. Beyond Weymouth is Potland, an island connected to the mainland by Chesil Beach, a shingle beach stretching along the Dorset coast for something like 18 miles. Upon arriving, make for the Verne, for one of the best views in the county, but of course you require clarity of light to make this shot work. I had to add this shot because of its name. It relates to a stone pillar left by former mining activity that provided stone for the breakwaters of Portland Harbour, seen in the photograph. Beyond, the Dorset coast stretches eastwards for miles, a magnificent prospect on a clear day. Home Fen, bordering the fens, is one of the finest examples of birch woodland in lowland Britain. You can see it from the train when approaching Peterborough. I chose to alight and take a walk. I find spot metering essential for images of high contrast, and I describe my technique in other programs on this channel. Basically, I meter towards a highlight, allowing shadows to be rendered underexposed and then corrected in post-production. Opened in 1981, the Humber Bridge is a single-span suspension road bridge spanning the river, the longest of its type in the world until 1998. This shot is taken from the North Bank, the bridge making an effective addition to sunset shots, taken, of course, using techniques already mentioned and described in more detail here and elsewhere on my channel. The inclusion of figures was fortunate. All images are taken with the Olympus Pen EPL-1, demonstrating for the budget-conscious photographer that an expensive digital camera is not mandatory for quality images, or indeed in my case, commercial reproduction. Success in landscape and architectural photography is much more than owning an expensive camera. I hope that I have demonstrated that whatever camera you own, budget or super duper, you need to understand the subject even if it is unlikely to move away and have a traditional knowledge of photography. Of course, even if cameras do everything for you and successfully, do we really understand what is going on? This lack of essential knowledge has occasionally been brought home to me when I have been asked, what is an aperture?